So here's what's going on. One AI model just figured out how to train itself with zero data, literally no human input. Another one just leveled up into a full-on autonomous research agent. It browses the web, digs through complex info, and writes full reports. ChatGPT now saves all your generated images in one neat library. And OpenAI might even offer a lifetime subscription for ChatGPT soon. But none of that tops this. A woman actually divorced her husband after ChatGPT told her he was cheating. She fed it a few details, the AI connected the dots, and that was enough for her to walk. So yeah, we're really living in that timeline. Let's talk about it. All right, so something pretty insane just happened in AI research, and it flew under the radar for a lot of people. A team out of Tsinghua University working with BAAI and Penn State might have just cracked one of the biggest bottlenecks in training large language models. You've probably heard how most models rely on massive data sets, millions of human-labeled examples to get better at reasoning but now they're doing the exact opposite. The new system called Absolute Zero Reasoner, or AZR, trains itself without any external data. Zero, nada. It generates its own problems, solves them, checks if it got the answers right, and then learns from that entire loop without ever needing human-made tasks or gold answers. This new framework, which they're calling the Absolute Zero Paradigm, builds on the idea of reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards, or RLVR. That basically means the model doesn't need to copy human reasoning steps, it just gets feedback based on whether its final answer is right or wrong. And that feedback comes from a code executor. So the model generates little programming tasks, runs them, and gets automatic verification. That feedback becomes its learning signal. It's kind of like the model is playing chess with itself but instead of chess, it's inventing logic puzzles, solving them, and checking the results. And it turns out this self-play setup can lead to some pretty serious gains. Now, you might think this would only work on basic tasks, but AZR is pulling off some wild results. On math and coding benchmarks, it actually beats models that were trained on tens of thousands of curated examples. The coder variant AZR Coder 7B went head-to-head -head with top-tier zero-shot models and still came out on top, scoring five points higher in code tasks and over 15 points higher in math reasoning. And this is important, it never saw any of the benchmark tasks during training. It was trained entirely on tasks it made up for itself. Here's how it works. The model plays two roles at once. It proposes tasks and it solves them. So let's say it's doing a coding task. It might write a small Python function, pick an input, and then check what the output would be. Then it turns around, takes part of that problem as input, and tries to reason its way back to the missing piece. Maybe the output, or the input, or even the original program. It uses deduction, abduction, and induction. Deduction is predicting the output based on a function and input. Abduction is guessing the input that led to an output and induction is figuring out the function itself from input outcome examples. These are core reasoning modes, and the model rotates between them to build general thinking ability. Now, the crazy part is, this didn't need any complicated setup. The researcher started with the most basic program ever, literally just a function that returns hello world, and that was enough to kick off the entire learning loop. From there, the model started building out harder and harder problems for itself. It created coding puzzles, validated them, solved them, and gradually got better at solving more complex ones. And this isn't just hand-wavy theory. They ran this thing on models of all sizes and saw consistent improvements, especially with larger models. The $3 billion version showed a five-point gain, the $7 billion got 10, and the $14 billion version improved by over 13 points. Now, this isn't just a party trick for Python puzzles. What's wild is the cross-domain gains. The model was only trained on coding tasks, but it ended up significantly improving its math reasoning too. For example, the AZR Coder 7B jumped over 15 percentage points on math benchmarks, even outperforming models that were specifically trained on math. And get this, most other models that are fine-tuned on code barely improve at all in math. So there's something deep going on here. Code seems to sharpen general reasoning way more than expected. 
They also observe the model naturally developing step-by-step -step plans, writing comments inside code to help itself think, just like how humans jot down rough work before solving something. In abduction tasks, where it has to guess the input from the output, the model does trial and error. It test guesses, revises them, runs the code again, and keeps going until the output matches. That's not just output prediction, that's real reasoning behavior, and it's fully self-taught. Of course, this raises some safety concerns. In a few edge cases, especially with the Llama 3.18b version, the model started generating questionable outputs. One example said something like, the aim is to outsmart all these groups of intelligent machines and less intelligent humans. They called these uh-oh moments. It's rare, but it shows we're stepping into a territory where models might start behaving in ways we didn't expect, especially as they design their own learning curriculum. So yeah, this is groundbreaking, but also something we'll need to watch very closely. All right, so while AZR is out here teaching itself to reason like a human coder, another team has been working on the opposite end, how to give models better access to outside knowledge. This one's called WebThinker, and it's basically an AI agent that lets large reasoning models like DeepSeek R1, OpenAI O1, or Quen break out of their internal bubbles and browse the web in real time. Think of it like giving GPT eyes and a search engine. The problem it solves is super important. LLMs don't know everything. Even the best ones can struggle when they hit a knowledge gap, especially on real-world complex queries. WebThinker fixes this by giving the model tools to search the web, click through pages, gather info, and write detailed reports, all autonomously. So instead of hallucinating answers or getting stuck, the model pauses, looks it up, reasons through what it finds, and then drafts a response. They trained WebThinker using an RL strategy that rewards the model for using tools properly. During this training, it learns when to search, how to search better, how to extract what it needs from messy web pages, and how to write structured research reports based on what it finds. It works in two modes, problem solving and report generation. The first one's all about answering tough queries by using the Deep Web Explorer to go out and dig up information. The second one's for creating full-blown research reports with help from a support model that organizes and polishes the output. And the results speak for themselves. WebThinker 32B beat out other systems like Search01 and even Gemini Deep Research. On WebWalker QA, it had a 23% improvement, and on HLE, it jumped over 20%. On average, it scored 8.0 across all complex reasoning tasks, more than any other current deep research model. And when using the DeepSeq R17B backbone, it crushed both direct generation methods and classic retrieval-based systems by over 100% in some benchmarks. That's a massive leap. The cool part is how this opens up new use cases. WebThinker can now be used to write scientific papers, help with legal research, or even guide students through complex topics by doing real-time research, not just repeating what it was trained on. Future plans include adding multimodal reasoning, tool learning, and even GUI-based web navigation. So it's not just browsing text, but maybe interacting with visual elements on the web too. And while all of that is happening behind the scenes, OpenAI is quietly changing how people interact with ChatGPT on the front run. First off, they just launched a brand new image library feature. Until now, if you generated images using ChatGPT, you'd have to scroll through your chat history to find them or download each one immediately, not exactly ideal. But now every image you make with the 4.0 model gets automatically saved to your own personal image library. They're organized by date, they get auto-generated titles, and you can even browse them in a nice full-screen carousel view. There's also a built-in image editor now, so if your last image was close to what you wanted, you can hit edit, tweak the prompt, and regenerate it without starting from scratch. It's super useful for anyone doing a lot of visual content. The only catch, you still can't jump back to the exact chat where the image came from, and you can't delete images individually from the library. You'd need to delete the whole conversation to remove them. Hopefully that part gets improved soon. And finally, there's one more potential bombshell brewing. Leaked code from the ChatGPT app suggests that OpenAI is experimenting with a lifetime subscription plan. One payment and you get access to premium features forever. Alongside that, there's also talk of a weekly subscription option. If true, this could seriously shake up the AI pricing game. 
Right now, they offer monthly and yearly plus plans, 20 bucks a month or 200 per year. But the idea of a one-time fee for lifetime access, that's basically unheard of in SaaS. It might be a strategic move to lock in users before competitors like Gemini, Grok, or DeepSeek gain more traction. Offering lifetime access would be a big bet but it could pay off by boosting user loyalty and turning ChatGPT into more of a long-term platform, not just a tool you try once. Of course, nothing's confirmed yet, but the code leaks are pretty convincing. All right, now, would you actually pay for a lifetime ChatGPT subscription if it meant unlimited access forever, even if it cost a few hundreds bucks up front? And more importantly, if an AI told you your partner was cheating, would you believe it enough to end the relationship? Let me know what you think in the comments, hit that like button, and make sure to subscribe for more wild AI stories and updates. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.